Okay, I think it's the time now. Be funny. Welcome everybody to a, another semester here. BRI campus. So this uh, this year, I'm hoping that it's going to be we're going to do shorter Torahs. It's going to be a little bit less complex in the Torah of Rabbi Nachman. Sometimes he gets very complex with Kabbalah and bringing Gemaras, and so it's going to be a little bit simpler. We're going to do a little bit quicker of a shir to try to get like an injection of, uh, of Rabbi Nachman before Shabbos Kodesh. And so we're going to start in the Hutemaran Tinyana Sin and Nemdov. So just as a one moment of Dhamma, the concept of Messir's Nefesh is a very important concept in Yiddishkeit. Messir's Nefesh uh, to give up one's life, generally that's the understanding, to give up one's life for HaKadosh Baruch Hu, right? person puts the classic understanding, what's Messir's Nefesh? So someone will tell you, someone puts a gun to your head and says either, you know, do a vote of Zara or I'm going to kill you. So you're supposed to know, we know you're supposed to give up your life. It's most your Nefesh, give over your Nefesh for HaKadosh Baruch Hu. But that understanding is a very limited understanding. There's much more to Messir's Nefesh. Because that Messir's Nefesh sounds like it's only once in your life or hopefully never. What can we do on a daily basis for Messias Nefesh? So that's what Rabbi Nachman teaches us in this Torah, very powerful, very important for our life. So let's begin. Messias Nefesh, yesh l'kol echad ve'echad m'yisrael, b'chol yom v'chol shah. Says Rabbi Nachman an amazing thing. This Messias Nefesh, the concept that we were just discussing, one would think it means to give up his life. One could do it every day, every moment of every day. So Rabbi Nachman explains, Kigom, Shenosein Mamon Litzdaka. You hear this? One could give Sadaka, something that we do maybe every day, and he's actually being Moser Nefesh, one of the highest avodas that we have, being Moser Nefesh, he's able to do that, but with Sadaka. And so Rabbi Nachman explains, how can you do that with Sadaka? Vahamamon Hua Nefesh. Because Mamonis, this, this is an interesting line here, Money, mama, money, is the person's soul, is the nefesh. Now we know people, some people work, work themselves to death, but I don't think that's what we're discussing. What does Rabbi Nachman mean that the, the mominess is the nefesh? So he brings a pasuk, there's a pasuk, there's a mitzvah, the raisa, that one is supposed to pay his workers on time. Right? If you have a daily laborer, you have to pay him. If he works for you during the day, you have to pay him that day. And if he works that night, you have to pay him that night before the next day. So the Pasuk says, why? So the Pasuk says, now Rabbi Nachman just going to the end of the Pasuk, but it says, because this person's an Ani, he's poor, he needs the money. Ki a love who no say esnafsha. So it means he give either he means he gives his life for it. He's giving his life for the work he's doing. But in other words, we could say that his life depends. His life depends on this money. So Rabbi Nachman's explaining that you see here. That mominess, money, is equal to someone's life. As the Pasuk says, his life depends on the money that you're going to give him. So Menachem explains right there. Dahainu, this means, Shemoser Nafsho, a person gives up his life, his Moser Nefesh, Biyigios, struggling, Visakanos, and the dangers that he goes through in his job. I mean, a person has to go to work, and he has to struggle. He has to have financial ups and downs. He has to have fights at work. He has to have sakana. Sometimes people's jobs are actually real sakanas. Sometimes it means it's a sakana for his nefesh. Sometimes it means it's, a, it's an emotional sakana. But a person has to really go to battle when he goes to work. But we know that we work is called going, getting your lechem, getting your bread. Right? That's... Getting your bread, getting your mazonos, it means going to work, getting a parnasa. So lechem is the same letters as milcham, like lochem, to fight. Because when you're going to get your bread, you've got to fight, tooth and nail. So a person is giving up his nefesh, he's struggling, he's putting all of his efforts in when he goes to work. And that's just to get the mominus. And then what happens if he's a good yid, says Ramnachim, the Akhrakach, and after that? Note of a moment, he takes that moment that he earned with his blood, 
And he gives it over to fulfill a command of God. Nimsa, right, for tzedakah. Hashem says you have to give tzedakah. It's an important thing. So he takes this money that he earned by battling. So you see what? Nimsa Moser Nafsha. So says Rabbi Nachman, you see here that when a person gives money to tzedakah, it's key he's giving up his life. Like the Pasuk said, Ki elav hu no seyes nafsho, that this day worker, his life depends on the money he earns. And now he goes and he gives this money to tzedakah, not everything, but he has to give, either he gives nicer or he gives tzedakah to a certain cause. He's giving up his life. Again, just a simple marshal. We're not, it's not even a marshal. We're just going to spell it out. So you have a guy who's working all day. He goes all day and he works. <clears throat> and he had a tough day at work. Ups and downs. He had to fight with his boss. And he had to talk to this client. He had to talk to that client. And now, at the end of the day, okay, it doesn't work like this nowadays so much, but you get paid. Right? He gets paid right at the end of the day. Right? Or let's say it was the end of the week and he got his check. So now he's on his way home and he's ready to go cash in the bank. Right? $1,000, $2,000, whatever it is. And on the way, an auntie comes and says, listen, I have no money, I'm poor, I have children, I need $300. So you're looking at him and you feel bad for him. But the $2,000, you killed yourself this week for that. You woke up early, you came home late, you, it was hard to you didn't spend so much time with your kids, you didn't spend so much time with your spouse, you had to fight at work, you had to do all these things, make yourself crazy, and now he wants to take your money. He wants to take a piece of your life. You put your life into that. That's not easy. But a Kaddish Prabhu says, listen, it's a mitzvah tzedakah. So a person who's misgathered, and he does, wants to do the mitzvah daraisa, and he gives over this money to the poor person, he's giving a piece of his life. He's literally giving over a piece of his hard-earned life to this person. So we're not telling us, you see, that a person, by giving tzedakah, you're being most nefesh, mamish. You don't have to give up your life. You don't have to take a bullet in the head. Chas Hashem, which never happened to us, to be considered a Moser Nefesh, like the, the Yidin who gave up their lives in the, in the Holocaust, in the show. Uh, all the stories of Mysterious Nefesh, amazing stories. But we don't need that to happen, to be Moser Nefesh for God. And I'll say something else here that I believe... Are Kavanah's needed? Or no Kavanah's, just the, the fact that a person does that? that Kavanah's not necessarily are needed. I mean, it's, it's, it's automatic. I worked hard for this money. This is very difficult for me. Now, I'm, I'm, it's not so easy to get stuck. If you give a dollar, even for a dollar, sometimes it's very hard for people. But anything that you give up of your moments, your hard-earned cash, then by you, that's giving up your life. Now, some people, money comes very easy, and it's not hard for them to give. So this would now be his myth of Mr. Snafish. Getting up to go to davening. He's got to wake up hard. He's got to wake up early. Kills him to wake up early. He just wants to sleep and he's so tired. But listen, you gotta go to Minyan. By him, that's Mysterious Nefesh. That's of the highest of Odas that we have that we could do for a Kaddish Um It's important to note, and I think this is, I think Rabbi Nachman's alluding to this, that, like we explained, number one, Mysterious Nefesh means not just giving up your life for a shit. Level two is the mitzvah itself. The mitzvah of tzedakah, let's say, like Rabbi Nachman is explaining. To give, up, to give money that you worked hard for, that, when you give that money to that poor person, to that organization, to that school, that's mysterious nefesh. But I think there's another level. I think this is the chiddush of Rabbi Nachman. Because he tells us, why did Rabbi Nachman tell us about <clears throat> the yegiyas and the sakanas? I believe that when you're going to, let's say, this example, you're going to work, and you're killing yourself at work to make money, and ultimately, you're going to give, let's say, Meister, 10% of that money to tzedakah. We don't just look at that one minute of tzedakah as the act of Mr. Snafish. Rather, every minute you are at work struggling, that itself is a Mr. Snafish for Hashem. Because ultimately, that money is going to go to the midst of tzedakah. So it's not just that last minute. Every moment you're working, if let's say you an account. 10% of my paycheck is going to Tadaka. Every single moment you're at work, every single struggle, every single whatever you go through your work, that's Mitzvah, Messir Snafish, another Messir Snafish, another Messir Snafish, another Messir Snafish. That's an amazing thing. That changes your whole day. That's a game changer.
It's not just, well, I worked hard, and now, at the end, I borrowed Hashem, I have a little bit of money for tzedakah. Ah, beautiful mitzvah. And for the whole week, it was no Avodah Hashem. Because during that 9 to 5, it's not Avodah Hashem, it's, uh, it's work. But once a week, when I give my money to tzedakah, it's an Indian of Avodah Hashem. No, says Rabbi Nachman, no way. You were Moser Nefesh when you went to work that day. Every moment of that, if you're going to give the money to Zadok. Not all of it, but whatever you give. That's an amazing thing. <clears throat> Mysterious Nefesh means, Mysterious Nefesh means you put your blood into something. You, you're Moser, you're giving up your Nefesh for something. There's a Pasuk says that when Shimon and Levi, we know, Shimon and Levi went to destroy Shechem. Right? The city of Shechem, because Shechem violated their sister Dina. And he's, according to the measure, she was actually holding her captive. So Shimon and Levi, we know, they did the whole trick where they told the people of Shechem, why don't you all do bris milos? Then we could marry into you, because if you don't have a milo, we can't, we, can't, we can't be with you. So they decided, all the people of Shechem said, okay, it's a great idea. Let's, let's, uh, let's have bris milos. We know the third day is the most painful day. So, Shimon and Levi go on that day when everybody was at home in bed, in pain, they went and they decimated the entire city, they killed out everybody. The Pasuk there says, in Boratius, it says, when Shimon and Levi were going out to fight against the city of Shem, it says, Shimon the Levi Achei Dina. Shimon and Levi, the brothers of Dina. That's pretty obvious, we know that already. Why are you telling me over here that they're the brothers of Dina? It should just say, Shimon and Levi went to Go kill Hashem. So Rashi picks up on this, Achei Dina. And if you see Rashi over there, he says, L'fisha Mosru Atzmon Alev, since they were ready to give up their life. They could have died in this in this war against Shem. Yes, they had the upper hand because the people were in pain, but they could have died. They were Moser, they were L'fisha Mosru Atzmon Alev, Nikru Achel. They were called her brothers. Meaning they were ready, they were already her brothers. But when they decided to be most and nefesh, to give up their lives, mamish for their sister Dina, they got another level. It wasn't just the DNA brotherhood. They became in the panemius, in the innards of this world. They became much deeper levels of brother, brothers to Dina. Because they were most and nefesh. Because they, what happened? When you're most and nefesh for somebody, you're putting a piece of yourself into them. You're ready. You're, when you're most average for money, you're putting your, yourself into the money. That's what it means. That's, that's why it's so hard to give up tzedakah. I'm putting a piece of myself in this, this ayah. Yes? Mm-hmm. So that's what Mysterious Nefesh is, and Ibn Nachman saying you can do it at every moment. Let's go back here. V'chein b'tfilo, this is, so, this is also by tfilo. Yisim medish nelam in the Zohar. It says in the Pasuk, the Pasuk that we say every day by Shema, it says, V'ahavta, as Hashem alokecha. One should love God. It says Moshe Rabbeinu, you have to love God with all your heart, all of your soul, and all of your ma'od, which means money or means all of your midos. But in the part of Ubuchol Nafshecha, means all of your soul, the Medjish Nelam says, Shehi Bechinas, as the Pasuk says, Ki Alecha Horagnu Kolayon. Says the Zohar, Ki Ilu, when you say, I love you, Kaddish Baruch Hu, so much that I'm ready to give up my nefesh for you. It means, Kaddish Baruch Hu, for your sake, I'm slain, I'm killed every day. Meaning, says Rabbi Nachman, Hainim Asir's nefesh. When you say, you're supposed to love God so much that you're ready to be most a nefesh for God every moment of every day. Not just like Rabbi Yekiva, who waited his whole life and when he was dying, Al Kiddush Hashem, when the Romans were killing him, he said, Shema Yisrael, the hafta, the cholavav, the cholnafshecha, because he was ready to give up his life for Kaddish Baruch Hu. But kol alecha haragmu kol hayom. Kol hayom means every day, but it means all day, every day. Then when a person gives himself up to serve God, I want to sleep, I'm so tired. But no, I have to break myself and go and get up. Or this money, I really wanted it for X, Y, and Z, all the other things that I have. But no, I have to break that inner desire of keeping the money for myself and giving it to a poor person, to an organization, to an internet tzedakah. That's killing yourself every day on sincerest nefesh for God. That's an unbelievable vote. And with your question before, with the kavana, 
even though you don't necessarily need kavana, it, it is important when you're giving any mitzvah, because it really goes down to the, it goes back to the, the, the sugi of, do you need kavana by mitzvahs? Now, although we say you do need to have a certain kavana by mitzvahs to know that you're doing a mitzvah, in the paninius, it's important for your self growth. It's important to know that right now, I'm giving myself up for this mitzvah. If you think like that, or I'm waking up, not because I have to go to shul, I have to go to minion because otherwise you know, my kids are going to look at me funny, or I have to go to shul because otherwise the people in the shul are going to notice I'm not there and it's embarrassing. That's a mila, and it's still good to go for that. But to, to say I'm being most nefesh, I'm killing myself for God, to think with that kavan, that's going to that's gonna build strong penis muscles. Big muscles to continue to serve God in a very strong way. So says Rabbi Nachman, when a person's davening, it's a big struggle. It's a big machama, like that word we said before. It's a big machama with all the machshavas and the bilbum, the confusions when a person's davening. Davening is very difficult. People are thinking about all types of things. People are thinking about work. People are thinking about the news. People are thinking about Trump. I don't know, whatever they're thinking about. Think about everything else but God. It's a big fight to try to keep one's mind on the field. You have to be most certain nefesh. Meaning my nefesh wants to think about this and I want to think about this and I want to think about all the other things but davening. But I have to be most certain nefesh. I have to give over all of those desires and give it to God. And just stay here even though maybe I don't necessarily feel davening so much. I have to give up all those desires. I have to give up thinking about work, the strategies of the day. I have to give that up right now. And I have to focus on God. Be says we're not going to write You have to think of different strategies, different tricks in order to escape all of these machshavas that try to destroy us during davening. Val zenemar, and that's what the Zohar is telling us. Ragna. Specifically by tefillah, a person kills himself every moment of tefillah to try to stay focused to God. Kamuva the medish nelam like it was brought in the medish nelam like Rabbi Nachman explained from the Zohar. So it's so you see from here, this is the Indian of, of Mesir's Nefesh. And anything else that's like this, any other mitzvah, like we said, getting up for davening or spending money on a mitzvah, spending money on an esrog and a lulov and a sukkah, any mitzvah that you have to give up what you thought you wanted, you have to give up on that and you have to focus it towards God, towards mitzvahs, towards the Vodas Hashem, that's Mesir's Nefesh. You're giving over your nefesh for a Kaddish Baruch. It's an amazing thing. It's an amazing avod. And if you have that kavana, that I'm being most or nefesh in this moment, it's going to bring you to very high heights. Because, because a person, a person um, grows based on what's important to him. Right? Whatever is important to us, we want to do more of that. If cars are important to me, so I'm going to shine my car and buy more cars and read about cars, right? If God is important to me, so I'm going to think about God, I'm going to give up my other thoughts for God, I'm going to wake up early for God, I'm going to give money over for God. And when you do that, when you, when God becomes important in your life, then a Kodesh says, oh, this person's important in my life, says Hashem. And when Hashem says, you're important in my life, and good things happen. Then we have a happy life. When you're most nefesh for Hashem, Hashem's most nefesh for you. You bend over backwards for God, He's going to bend over backwards for you. It's an important thing. He has your back. Mm-hmm. Who better to have our back than their bonus show? But let's go weiter. Vidas is a you should know. You have to know when Rabbi Nachman says Vidas means you have to know very deeply. This is very important. Listen to this. The famous breast of Menias obstacles. You have to know that the Menias that everybody goes through with a Vodas Hashem, serving God. Kigon, for example, Rabbi Nachman says, Linso the Hatzavika Emes Kayotse. For example, a person wants to go and wants to travel to a Tzavik Emes. Like Rabbi Nachman speaks about many times. 
that has to do with serving God in a very deep way. What is Hashem? Listen to this. To each and every single person, it appears that his obstacles, his manias, that his manias, this obstacle I'm going through right now, I want to be a big Baal Tzedakah, but I have such financial burdens. I want to go to a Tzadik Emes, but how am I supposed to get there? I have all these other issues. So he thinks, it appears to him, that Every time a person has obstacles, if he's not worked on himself, he thinks, I'm the only one in the world who has these obstacles. And if not that, my obstacles are bigger than the next guy's. Like, how does Rebona Shalom want me to pass this? He gives me the hardest test. This guy, his, okay, I know he has tests. Okay, fine. But they're not so hard. My tests, my words, my burdens, my anxieties, it's much, much bigger. The Kashalam then. And when a person has those thoughts, it becomes very difficult to withstand them. Everybody has obstacles. Everybody has manias. But a mania very often comes from the outside. Let's say a financial burden. A mania, an obstacle that a person, let's just say the, the example that you want to go to the Tzad again. You want to go to Uman for Rosh Hashanah. But your spouse says you can't go. You've got to stay home for Rosh Hashanah. So these are, these are manias that come from the outside. Okay? Rabbi Nachman's explaining that when a person feels inside that his obstacle right now is the biggest obstacle, that his obstacle is bigger than other people's, you just compounded your obstacle times a million. Because when you have an obstacle on the outside, you can deal with it. But when it becomes internal, it starts to mess with your brain, and starts to mess with your heart, and then you think your obstacles are the hardest in the world, and you know what happens then? You fall into the famous word, yish, despair. Because when, when you have these dimyonos, like Rabbi Nachman said, nidmelo, it appears, it's fake, it's imaginary. I think that my obstacles are bigger. How do you know if your obstacles are bigger? Who said? You know everything that that guy goes through. The guy next door, the guy on the other side of the tracks, you know what he goes through, you have no idea. But when you make that up in your head, that you have harder obstacles, you're going to fall into yish. You're going to fall into despair. Because who's going to help? My, I, have the hardest, I have the hardest manias in the entire world. I want to get to the tzaddik, I can't get there. I have this financial bar, I can't, I can't get to the tzaddik, I have too many burdens. It says, not going to You create within yourself the biggest manias. An internal manias. Says Rabbi Nachman, what are you doing? Da, you have to know. Should I call Echad Eino Min Yisraka Fi Kolko? Says Rabbi Nachman, Kodesh Baruch Hu never gives a person a mania, an obstacle, unless he has the ability to hurdle over. If you can only hurdle over a two-inch hurdle, Hashem gives you an obstacle that's only two inches. If you can go over five feet hurdle, Hashem will give you an obstacle that's five feet. But only Fi Kofi Kolko. So why are you looking at anybody else? Who cares about everybody else's obstacles? One of the downfalls of man is when you look outside your, your dollar house. The second you look at the next guy's wealth, the next guy's house, the next guy's obstacles, you're already, you're already lost. you lost. Because that means you're not living in your own world. How can you deal with your obstacles when you're living in someone else's world? It's impossible. Stay in your own world. Have a muna shlema the Debar Olam only gives an obstacle to you according to your koach, according to your strength. And everybody has the strength to withstand the obstacles that are given to him. According to what a person is able to withstand. In Yirtza. So it's an unbelievable thing. Everybody is given the minyas according to his kochos, and he's able to withstand them in Yirtza. He ends off, if you want. You know, when Cain, before Cain killed Hevel, that unfortunate first uh, first uh, act of brotherlyhood, when Cain killed Hevel, we know what happened. The story was that Cain and Hevel, they both gave Karbon Stasha. And Hevel gave the best, and Cain did not give the best of his stuff to the Bonus Shalom. And Hevel's carbon was accepted, and Cain's carbon was not accepted. 
Kind falls into despair. He he's miyayish. He becomes depressed. The puzzle does become depressed. His face falls. He's he's walking around. He doesn't know what to do with himself. He's so depressed. Hashem didn't, didn't answer my carbon. Ultimately, he becomes jealous and kills heaven. But before that, Hashem comes to him. Hashem comes to Kain. It's in the Pesukim. In Barishas, look in the beginning. And he says, Kain, why are you so upset? Why are you miyayish? What's wrong with you? Didn't Rabbi Nachman say you can't have Yish? Right? You can't be Miyayish. What does Hashem say to Kain? Listen to this. Halo Imtetiv says, says, Hashem says to Kain, if you want to be better, you could do it. Simple. If you want to be better, says, that's the same motion that Rabbi Nachman used, Allah says, if a person wants to be better, you can overcome it. If the Imlo Tetiv, but if you don't want to become better, then he says, Lepesach Chatas Robins. At the point that you don't want to become better, that's where sin is crouching. If you want, Hashem says you have all the ability. It's all within you. There can be no test that you don't have the inner strength, the inner fortitude to be able to withstand. If you want. If you don't want to, then that's where sin lies. Meaning, you're going to be Miyayish, you're going to stay in that state of Yish, and we know in that state of Yish, everything breaks down. If you want it. Rabbi says, if you want, you can pass anything. The problem is, if you look outside your Dal Amos, you're looking at the next guy's obstacles, you're killing your own desire to be able to change and to be able to grow and to be able to pass over this hurdle. So we'll see here. Let's go a little bit later. Ube Emes says Rabbi Nachman, he's saying a second thing. So first of all, with these Minias, these self-created Minias, they're very silly, because why are you looking at anybody else? You have the power within to pass it. It's an obstacle, it's difficult, but don't worry, you can do it. But listen to this, Rabbi Nachman. Ube Emes says Rabbi Nachman, ain't Shemini. Really? There's no such thing as an obstacle. It's all an illusion. Ki gam ba'atzmo, Melubosh Sham Hashem Yisbarach. In every menia, in every obstacle, it's just an illusion with God on the inside. Every obstacle, if you would unzip that obstacle, that financial burden, that fight with your friend, whatever it is, underneath in that place, there's Yud Kevake, the Rebbe Shalom. Because what's every Nisayim? What's every obstacle? It's just the potential to grow over, to hurdle over the obstacle. Every obstacle is an opportunity. We have to change the, the understanding of Minya. We have to change it. Minya does not mean obstacle. Rabbi Nachman says, Ubem is ancient Minya. There's no such thing as a Minya. Well, then what does that mean? Minya? What does the word mean? Minya. You know what Minya means? Minya means opportunity. Every minia, which we used to call obstacle, we have to change it. No more, we're not using the word minia. The translation is not obstacle. Tell everybody you know, no more, we're not using the word obstacle anymore. We're going to call it opportunity for growth. A minia means Hashem is hiding within this Indian, and within this Indian, we can grow to the highest. That's what minia is. Because when a person, let's say, for example, is working out, when a person is working out, let's say he's doing the bench press, right? Everyone knows the bench press. And he's a big guy, and he can handle 200 pounds bench press. 200 pounds with barbells on the side. Now, if he would take that bar and he put 50 pounds on each side, 100 pounds, and he'd go one, two, three, four, it's a joke. It's a joke. He's not working out. He's not going to grow any muscle from that. Right? There's no muscle to grow when he, when he can do 200, but he's doing 100. So what does he need to do? He needs to put 200 on that's the weight he's at. He needs to max out. Correct? Everybody, everybody knows this. You have to push against the max weight you can do. That's what's going to build the muscles in your body. That's what a mania is. A mania is putting 200 pounds on the bar. The exact amount of whatever the Indian is. Let's say a person's a kas. He's working on his anger. So Hashem sends him a mania according to where he's holding him in his temper. He sends him, right, if a person has a really bad temper problem, 
So Hashem has to just send them a, you know, a, a mild reason. If you have a very good, if you could hold your temper and you're very calm, so Hashem is going to say, a really, really annoying person to try to get you. According to where you're holding, Hashem is going to send you the obstacle. But it's not an obstacle. It's an opportunity because if you can pass this test, you have now got to the next Madriga. It's just Hashem hiding in a different way. Because if everything was all fine and dandy, we don't always grow. We would just sit in our hammocks, drinking our pina coladas, and reading a book. But you're not going to, this world, we're meant to grow. In Olam Haba, we could sit in our hammocks. In this world, we were put in here to be tested, to grow to the biggest Jews, we could be, the biggest Obdei Hashem. And for that, we need to have to fight against the exact amount of weight that we can handle. So Mania is not supposed to hurt us. It's supposed to make us grow. Let's look at, if you have the, if you have the, the Rakutim around, the VRI edition, you have to see this note number 12. This is just, I can't say any better. Because really, he's quoting Rabbi Nachman. Look, let's look at the notes. Just read it straight. So number 12 is going on the, what we just said, that God is enclosed even in the obstacle itself, as explained elsewhere. So says <coughs> Rabbi Kramer in the notes here, Silukut Imaran, where Rabbi Nachman teaches that God hides himself, as it were, in the obstacle. The Rebbe explains, thus, whoever is wise, Whoever is a Chacham will look at the obstacle and discover the Creator there. If you have the right eyes, that we daven every day in the morning, Hashem, Pokeach Ivri, open up the eyes of the blind. Hashem, open up my eyes that I see properly, that I see you hiding in everything. Just like when we say, we're saying that, God, I know that you're, you've given me this cup, this drink. Everything comes from the Word of God. So in every obstacle, every meal, I want to be able to see you, Rabbi Nachman. So it says Rabbi Nachman, says in the note, whoever is wise will see the creator of the world in that obstacle. But someone who's not wise, who's not wise? A fool. The fool is the ksil, the yetzahar. The yetzahar within the person, when he sees the obstacle, he immediately retreats. Oh, this is hard. I can't do this. You're missing an opportunity, my friend. Again, the knee is not an obstacle, it's an opportunity. However, he, God himself, hides himself as it were within the obstacles. And one who is wise will be able to find God within the obstacles themselves. For the truth is that there are no obstacles whatsoever in the world. There are no obstacles. There's only opportunities. Thus, specifically through the obstacles themselves, one is able to draw closer to the Holy One, for God is hidden in there. It's not just when everything's going well, when I'm davening well, when I'm learning well, that's when you draw close to God. It's when you take a manier, you take it, you unzip it, you find the Rebbe Shalom in there, and you say, I'm going to pass this test. That's an amazing way to get close to Hashem. So if the daven to Kodesh Baruch Hashem, you should open up our eyes that we see you within all the obstacles of our life. So let's we have a few more minutes here, and I'm gonna we're gonna read this next paragraph. We might have to continue. We might have to come back to it again next week, but let's start it right now. If anybody has any questions, you can type them in. We'll try to uh, answer them in the next few minutes. So we have a question here. So do we pray to be tested as David and Melech did? That's an interesting question. Do we ask for nisyonos? The general answer is we don't ask for nisyonos. We don't ask for tests. The tests come to us anyway. Because when you ask for a test, like David Amelov did, he, I don't want to say anything, but David Amelov failed the test. So we don't want to, we're no better than David Amelov. So we don't want to ask for tests. Tests come. Let them come. They come in all shapes and sizes and all colors and forms. And uh, we can deal with them. Thank you. Well answered. <laughs> okay. Let's just continue for another minute or two. It says we're not invited there. This is what we were just discussing. The greatest maniyah, the greatest obstacle. Now, don't forget, it means opportunity. But for a moment, we have to think of it as an obstacle. This is going to get, we have to get into our heads here for a minute. The biggest maniyah of all, it's the obstacles created by our own minds. The confusions of our own mind. 
דהיינו מה שמוכר ליבו חלוקים מהשם יסבורך ומייצר. So the Benachman, he means, when your mind and your heart are separate against Hashem or against the Tzadik, כי אפילו כשמשבר המניעוס שיש לו לנסוע להצדיק, האמץ הוא בו לשם, because even when you break the מניעוס, trying to travel to a Tzadik, many different types of מניעוס, you have to have money to go to the Tzadik, you have to get off from work, you have to go to leave your family, all the different מניעוס that you have to get to the Tzadik Amis. But in כל זה, when you get there, כשמורך וחולות וקשה לקושה של הצדיק, when your mind is separate, and you have questions on the tzaddik, the yeshu akmumi is believable of the tzaddik, and your heart is crooked, you have the wrong emotions against the tzaddik, zos ha meniyah moneah also yos in the kominiyah. This is the greatest meniyah that you have. This is the inner type of meniyah. The external meniyah was the money trying to get to the tzaddik, finding a wagon, getting off from work. Those are external meniyahs. Those are difficult. But you can get through that. But when you have a confusion in your mind, when you have inappropriate emotions or thoughts or feelings against the tzaddik, now you've taken that mania from the outside and you're now it's inside of you. Now that's very difficult. For example, we'll have to continue next week, but you know, you, you travel to the tzaddik, you fly all the way to Eretz Yisrael, whatever it is, and you find the tzaddik, and you get there, and he doesn't, he doesn't really, you know, show you that he cares so much that you came. Now, you're, you're Mr. Big Shot. You just spent all this time, all this money to get to him. And he's, he's just treating you like everybody else. He's not mean to you, but he's not. What did you expect? You expect him to give you, oh, Shalom Aleichem. Wow, you came so far. That's what we expect. And now when the Tzadik's not doing that, you have a lot of cautious. He's a Tzadik Amos. This is how the Tzadik Amos treats me. When you get into that mode, that bad thought pattern, you're in trouble. That's very difficult to get out of. Then you start to have all sorts of cautious confusions. Oh, maybe he's not really tzaddik. Maybe all those things that he's doing is really not so good. You're gonna get into this pattern and you're gonna get stuck. It's an inside mania. This is the worst kind of mania. And it came really, it came from your covet and your guide. It came from your own problems. This is the problem. The inner manias are my gaiva and my covet and my taivas. But generally, we're blind to that, and I'd rather just blame it on the tzaddik. Why don't you, you know, why don't you show me the love? Really, it's my own guy. Why should the tzaddik show me love? He's the tzaddik Gavis. I'm just a, you know, a little guy from Yokelsville. But this is the problem. And when we get stuck in this mode, it's going to be very hard to break out. These manias are the biggest opportunities because confusions of the mind hold us back from, from everything in life. What is Hashem, better relationships, everything. So to break through a mania like this, this opportunity is of the biggest. If you can clarify your mind and cleanse your mind, cleanse your needles from gaiva and taiva and kav, then you're, you're going to become a big tzavik yourself. We're going to have to stop here. We have, we have a lot to talk about. I'll just leave you with one last one last thing that hit me today. I have to mention it because it hit me today. A cute little uh, a cute little thing. <clears throat> Negativity. Every moment a person has the opportunity to be negative or positive. This is part of our, our every moment test on God. If I'm positive, I have a moon in Hashem. If I'm negative, it means in a little bit of a way I don't have a moon in Hashem. Because why am I being negative? What's the problem? If I believe that Hashem, everything was in Hashem, everything's for the best, so everything should be positive. Negativity is a every moment nisan. I'll tell you a cute thing. Negativity is an English word, yes? Negativity, yeah? But let's break down this word. Nega. Negativity comes from the word nega. What's nega? Nega saras. A nega is a blemish. It's saras on the body. Negativity is the activity of a nega. It's the yitzahar. That's what a nega is. Nega is the worst type of, of, of yitzahar we have. Where's the Yetzirah come from? Let's end with this. Where's come from? Everybody knows. Lashon Har. Lashon Har. Lashon Har, when you speak badly about other people, you got Saras. The worst type of Yetzirah is when a person speaks Yetzirah about himself. 
When you're negative, you're speaking gates of horror about yourself. When you don't think you could pass a mania, you're speaking gates of horror about yourself. That's negative. I have to end here. I see one last question here. Is it true that when we pray or when we do mitzvahs, we are not supposed to do them in anticipation of being rewarded for doing the mitzvah or, or praying the prayer, but rather just for the sake of doing it because we're supposed to? If yes, how do we overcome the idea that maybe we will get rewarded and why are we not rewarded for doing those things? Okay, <laughs> it's, 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 a, it's a big question. Um, I think we're going to have to start with it next week. It's just that we don't have time right now, and there's other shirim to go through. But uh, we will remember this question, and we will start with that next week. So everybody should have a, a good Shabbos and a good week. Yes, we play.